In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I recently received an email from a Romanian church from the faraway land advertising a parish council, a parish assembly or something. And one of the items that they were going to discuss was the membership increase. That is the dues that the members have to pay to the church. And uh, I thought, wow. This sounds so strange to us. Our church, that is the Greek Orthodox Church in America, renounced the due systems, the so-called membership, in the favor of stewardship a long time ago. And, um, you know, today's parable that we hear of the prodigal son is so rich in, in the content, and I would like to pick up on it from this point of view. Are you a member or are you a steward? Did you ever think of this? And today, the prodigal son gives us the theme of repentance. The two sons of the father encompass all of us. And for no reason, one of them, the young one, took off. We all do things for no reason. Took off, and all the gifts that his father had given him, his life, his soul, his virtues, his energy to work, his mind, his goodness. He took them away from the Father. And we should know this clearly, that the great sin of us as prodigal sons, by the way, Chronia Pola, happy name day to all of us, is not that we took these, not only that we took these gifts and we wasted them, that we're wasting them as I speak, but that we turn our back on the love of God with no reason. And we took off. And we're in far lands. And this young man, away from his father, who teaches us as parents, as fathers, as, as Orthodox Christians, the great lesson of suffering by being quiet, but not saying anything, by taking up a cross in patience, waiting, the Father honored the freedom of the Son, who went out and joined himself to that country and glued himself to the citizens there, whom we know represent the devil, and in his passion could not even think of his Father. It is kind of a membership situation here. He considered himself a member of the church. He thought of his father. He thought of his church. But this member was away from the church. Not only that, he was into the pit. And, and this gluing to his passions led him to losing everything. Glory be to God that he came to his senses by God's grace. And he repented. He thought of what he lost, which is what we're doing now as Lent begins. And then he realized what happened. And he decided, he arose, he said, I will arise and go to my father and ask for his forgiveness. For my father is good and always will forgive me. So he did. And here we find this scene that is depicted in the icon where the father on the cross, waiting, embraces his dead son, lost son, the member. But the father had another, another son, a steward. And the steward started to complain once the prodigal returned and he was treated, restored, and he showed his real stewardship. That was what? Of a servant said, I served you all along and I obeyed the commandments. Look at this ex exemplary stewardship. I obeyed your commandments and I was there and served you. And you can think of this. I served in this ministry and this ministry and I did this and I did this and I raised my children and everything else. And I obeyed the commandments. But when this son of yours, couldn't even call him on the name, his brother, returned, you killed the fatted calf. But for me... He didn't give me anything, not even a goat, to have fun. The stewardship 
example of the older son is the example of the steward who is away from God the Father, who is dead as well because he has no life of communion with the only source of life, true life, God himself. He had never tasted the body and blood of Christ in the fatted calf because he didn't know how to find God his Father in his very house. Dangerous stewardship example. But there's something that the parable teaches today on how to change these and give new meaning to the members and stewards of the church of God. It is repentance. And in our church, brothers and sisters, unlike the Protestant churches out there, Repentance comes along with confession. And this young man who was lost in his prodigal life living, just like we are, managed to repent and confess. And at the end of this, his confession was honored by him being restored, dressed with the best robe, receiving the, the, king, the, the ring of the Holy Spirit, preparing himself to receive Holy Communion, the body and blood of Christ, the fatted calf, and the sandals to tremble over all the sin and never go down the pit anymore. And only after this, he dared to come to embrace the Father's offering of the fatted calf. So what is this confession that we all talk about in different terms, if, we, if any at all? The Russians are required to do confession before every liturgy when they receive Holy Communion. Most of the Romanians do the same. Some in the other countries do not receive Communion because they could not prepare to do confession and therefore they only receive Communion once a year or God knows what. The mystery or the sacrament of repentance and confession, it is much more than writing the sins down on a piece of paper and formally presenting them to the priest on a Saturday or Sunday morning before receiving Holy Communion. That is necessary, but not sufficient. Preparing for confession goes over the embarrassment of our brokenness. Yes, it is about locating ourselves in the pit with the prodigal son away from the love of God the Father not being able to love God and not being able to love my neighbor. But it has to go to a higher step to call that confession repentance and make it to this point where the Father embraces us. Confession is bringing our brokenness to the Lord in a broken heart. It is a state of mind, of heart, a condition of the heart that involves determination like Zacchaeus, humility like the publican, and our presence in front of God. It involves tears to the point where the fathers of the church say that for us to make it to the kingdom, we must cry our way up. And they say that Repentance without tears is superficial. Confession is a searching of our heart deep with compunction to find ourselves in the strange land far away from God and to cry, Lord, I have sinned against you and I'm away from heavens. When we come to confession, we bring that state of repentance, not necessarily the sins and coldly read them, which is why confession takes preparation through prayer, fasting. This repentance that is given by the church formally in the way of reading prayer canons, and much more so this time of the year, the great and holy land. Look how much time we spend talking about this and how the Lent will start and put us in that, in that mood, in that 
in that shape and form of seeking repentance. Many times our heart is frozen and we feel no need to confess. We feel no need to return to the Father. The fathers of the church say, even then, take strength. See where you are. Write the list. And even cold, go to the spiritual father in front of Christ and do that confession. Because he will give to you much more to turn that heart. To soften it and grow from there. So confession is something that we all need in repentance. And why is this? Because this is the only way we can access the love of God the Father in the very being of the fatted calf, His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the only way in which we can become community in communion with God and with one another and above all I like you to take this home with you today that confession is the listing of the sins confession is my heart turning to God and finding his heart but above all confession is my return to God is my return to the church is my return to this community without repenting and confess confessing we are either like the member far away or like the steward plowing ahead not knowing what's given to us this community as the body and blood of Christ exists in communion the church, as the definition, is the Eucharistic gathering of the body of Christ. The church exists when we come together for the very purpose of Holy Communion, for no other purpose but for this. And this is what drives everything else, our membership and our stewardship. But to do this, we must come together. First of all, come to our own senses and then restored with the church. In my anger towards my brother and sister, I run from the church away to the faraway land. I cut me off from the body of, of Christ. In my in, inappropriate thoughts about the ones around me, I serve my soul from the body of Christ, I go away. In indulging my flesh with food, fornication, imagery, music, you name it, I distance myself from the rest, from the body of Christ gathered in here today in the church. So for us, as members of that body of Christ, for us as stewards taking care of He what entrusted to us, we must give sense to our membership and stewardship. And this can only be done when we are in communion with the fatted lamb, when we are accepted there. There's no other place the parable teaches today. No, not far away when we come together and have fun. Not even in his house when we serve him without community, communion and the eternal kingdom in mind repentance and confession brothers and sisters lead to what we call reconciliation we must reconcile with the body of Christ before receiving communion it's called reintegration I must come back I must return thank God for the great and holy land that gives us a chance to come back and reintegrate through repentance and confession the body of Christ is so important. It is the faith of those who return like the prodigal and are embraced, invested, and receiving the ring and the sandals that we get healed. Did you ever think of this? That your healing and mine depend on how we come together? 
If we stay at home, unus Christianus, nullus Christianus. One Christian, zero Christians. If we come together as members or stewards in Christ with faith, then healing happens in the body of Christ who gives himself to us. Listen to this here. In the early church, confession was done in the church in front of the community loudly. The penitent would step in the front and confess his sins or her sins. St. James writes, Confess your sins to one another that you may be healed. Your healing depends on the confession of the sins to one another. Today, the community is represented by the priest. One of the reasons why confession in our church takes place in the presence of the priest representing the community. For the healing of community through whom I will get healed. Our faith together. Remember Jesus here being brought a paralytic by four guys on a, on a bed through the roof. Telling them, says when Jesus saw their faith, he said, man, your sins are forgiven. When Jesus sees our faith, the forgiveness of the others becomes possible. Finding myself starving. And this starvation, you know, starving the body, St. Gregory Palama says, is an easy thing. He says, famine, as this young man uh, went through, Famine means being deprived of food and desiring that food. I'm hungry. I want to eat. Give me something to eat. I'm starving. This is what famine leads to. But St. Gregory says, there's something worse than this. Being deprived of the necessary means of salvation, what I need to be saved, and not perceiving how cursed I am. What a misfortune that is. Having no desire to be saved. The young man was like this for a while before he came to his senses. He had no desire. This is much worse than the physical starvation. Quoting prophet Amos here. Behold, the prophet says, the days come when there will be a famine, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the word of God. And it is this famine that affects us greatly of not hearing the word of God that is in the way of us seeing ourselves in the pit and coming to our senses, returning to the Father, returning to the community, returning to communion with Christ, with God, and with one another. So today, let us thank the Lord that we are Orthodox Christians. Let us be mindful that a great tool, a great path has been given to us to experience the life of the kingdom in this life, to be in communion with the Lord as members of his body, when one suffers, we all suffer. When one is healed, the rest will be healed. And also as stewards who work in communion with Christ to do, obey the commandments and uh, be the good servants. Beautiful Sunday today. We have two more before the great and holy land starts. We thank the Lord for being together, searching our healing in repentance. Glory be to Him, our God and Savior. Amen.